It's the weekend at Air Venture Oshkosh 2021. Let's see what's going on in this episode of Taking Off. Hey everyone, it's the weekend here at Oshkosh, Wisconsin for EAA's Air Venture. This is brought to you by Gold Seal, groundschool.com, and Wingfield Aviation, your go-to maintenance for your airplane. Okay, so it's actually downright chilly here for this Texan as the clouds have run in and we're here in Wisconsin where things aren't as hot as they are down south, but nice, comfortable weather. It's actually IFR on the field, and uh, for a Saturday morning, that could present some problem for all the people flying in for the weekend. But the spirits are high here. There's a lot of good stuff going on. And one thing that we're able to catch up on is the eVTOL, or Electric Vertical Takeoff and Landing. One of the things making a splash here at Oshkosh is the Volocopter. And we got a chance to sit down and talk with them. This isn't, there's no controls here. I'm not flying. Um, you're not, you guys aren't into that. You're just looking for mobility of people like a taxi in highly urbanized areas. Exactly. With this aircraft, it's just inside the city. Getting people from A to B, jumping over traffic, jumping over heritage infrastructure where you can tear down the entire city to make it more efficient, right? Singapore has an advantage. They were built in a time where mobility was already a, a topic in population density, but you can't just tear down New York to make the no. traffic more efficient. And, and the FAA, let's talk about the United States and the FAA. You guys have applied for a certificate. We've applied for a concurrent certification, which means that we've applied with the FAA that they um, accept our certification with the EASA once oh, it's done. Oh, right. Okay. Well, that'll make it easier, I guess. And you're anticipating how long for the FAA to grant you that? That's a question of weeks. It's not so once we've got European type certification, it'll be a couple of couple of weeks, maybe two months, but it's not a matter of several months. And we we've, we've had somebody from the FAA on the show and they talked about how they're really working hard with um, eVTOL and other places. Um, are they being real cooperative trying to help yes. They are cooperative. The, the administrator was actually actually here looking at this. I mean, the authorities, they see the opportunity in this because this is a very um, safe way of flying. There's no black box. It's completely transparent and visible for the, for the, um, for the regulator. Every line of code, right. everything, down to the last bit, <laughs> down to the provider of the carpet. This is a two-seater, no yeah. pilot, so it's just for passengers. Um, are there any plans for larger ones? Yes, we do have um, an aircraft that's being built right now. It's called the Velo Connect. We have uh, scaled models that are, we've been flying for a year or so. Well, the, okay, so then that begs the question, if I'm in New York City and I want to jump on a Volocopter to uh, go from uh, Midtown up to over to Brooklyn, how much is that going to cost me? It's going to be the same as a taxi price. Really? Yeah. So JFK to downtown Manhattan is going to be $150. Really? But you do it in 12 minutes rather than Holy an hour and a cow. half. Holy yeah. cow! I thought it would be a couple thousand dollars oh, or something. Absolutely not. When we start at the very, very beginning, we're looking at about $300 when we have limited supply. But once right. we start scaling our production, we can use economies of scale on almost wow. everything. And this is going to be affordable to anyone who can afford a taxi. It's never going to be the same as a bus fare. No, well, that won't be possible, but it'll be affordable. And wow. especially with the time savings, it'll be a good option. Okay, so this Volocopter idea is amazing. And if it actually comes to fruition, it's going to be a big deal. It's going to change a lot of things about the way that we travel and the way that we think about travel. Personally, I don't know if I'd fly in something that I personally couldn't pilot. We'll see. I make a terrible passenger anyway. But I just think that the concept of this is so um, futuristic. I personally would like to see something like this in my lifetime. But we'll see. There, there's a lot of red tape to get through. Um, we'll see what happens. As you guys can see, I am back at my place for now. I do go back to training this next week, but I'm getting a much deserved break off. Um, I hope to talk to you all soon and I'll see you later. 
EAA Air Venture this year has been packed, but not because of international. With the pandemic situation, a lot of borders have been closed. But one border not closed is from Alaska, and we got to sit down with Chris Palmer from Angle of Attack. Watching your videos, you've got a 172 with big fat tires. Um, why not do a tail dragger? And, and tell me the story of getting that 172. Yeah, it, well, it's actually just kind of serendipitous. So my, my neighbor came to me one time, like three days before Christmas. And he's like, hey, Chris, I want to go look at this airplane and potentially buy it. He wasn't a pilot at the time. It was that airplane that I ended up teaching him in mm -hmm. that I leased for my flight school for three to four years that is 2-3 uniform, the, the plane mm -hmm. that I, I bought. So. So it just kind of fell into it. It's not that you went out looking for a, a tricycle gear plane for Correct. the Alaskan bush. Correct, exactly. And I, I wouldn't even call that a bush plane. It has some very bush plane looking tires, <laughs> yes. but uh, it's got an underpowered engine, so yes. it can't, can't do too much. You are known, one thing in particular, where did <laughs> come from? It actually happened just before Josh Flowers came to Alaska. So I was with a student and they gave her a really weak clear prop, you know, <laughs> right. they, and it's clear actually fairly prop. common. Yep. Clear prop, that's <laughs> not doing anyone any good. So right. in a moment of, I don't know, genius, I don't know what you want to call it. <laughs> I opened the door, cracked it open and just let it loose and scared them and we had a good laugh. And so that was like a week before Josh got there. And so when he got there, I let it loose on him too. And, uh, and, and, a, and a legend was born. And a legend was born. And now everywhere I go, I am asked People to People want you clear. to do that. Yes. It's become your, your call, calling I card. I know. It's what I'm known for. I know. And, and here it's kind of scary. Like if I'm on a golf cart, the person will see me. And then they have kind of a gap of recognition. Like, is that really him? And then when they're right next to me, they scream clear. So <laughs> I've been frightened many times at Air Venture this time. Just, so it's working? It's working, yes. The, the good gospel is spreading all over aviation. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. And if you get a chance, go to his YouTube channel, subscribe, watch his videos, Angle of Attack on YouTube. All right. Well, I'll leave you with some sights and sounds from the weekend here at Air Venture.